Welcome back. If you'd like to skip forward to the section where I discussed the turbo math, uh, just fast forward to about the 5 minute 30 mark of the video. And if you'd like to see the update from the second half of this week, just keep following here. Okay, so things are moving along with the plugs here for the rudders. This is the, um, I believe it's the right, no, left side um, outer uh, plug for the outer rudder skin. And just got the little quarter inch ball mill on there and just working this little channel in the plug there and it's actually coming out really nicely. And meanwhile the guys are um, still working on finishing off the bracing on those um, other molds for the uh, ailerons. So there's another one that's finished there. And here's the last of the four rudder plugs there in putty ready to uh, go up on the machine. So it didn't take long to actually um, get those four. Again, another week just to knock those four out in terms of getting them to putty. And uh, here's the one that you saw just now. So that one's off the machine and uh, came out nicely ready for sanding. So nothing too tricky on that one. And there's the last one there that you just saw. Um, just getting ready to start off there and uh, get underway. So we didn't have too many problems with doing that and just sets us up for doing the elevators next. So we'll have the same thing with the elevators. There'll be a left and a right and an upper and lower. And then uh, after that we've got the main, uh, the spa for the um, for the four plane. There's two of those, a main one and a smaller one. And then we have the lower cowling and some baggage doors and that's pretty much it, a couple of small other little things. And here we are a little bit further along. So this is um, now Friday. Um, Zach and I were in the shop and working away and doing a few different things and had the machine running. And Zach's already busy sanding on the uh, the ones, the rudder ones for the inside. So this is the uh, inside one for the left winglet. And he's got that one pretty much ready for primer. And this one is basically got that one about half done so not taking too long to get those towards primer and back on wednesday jeff was uh, getting this all ready to have the bracing um, trimmed so it can be glass and this is for the second last part of the lower cowling the mold for that one so you can see he's got the the straight edge set up there so he can hot wire that um, when uh, they come back on monday and this is the mold or the first half of the mold for that little closeout for the uh, four plane so the first half is done and again next week be able to do uh, the second half and then that mold will be ready to create that part and this is the end of day on Friday so this one this plug here uh, got finished on the machine so that means all four of those rudder plugs um, got done in putty and as you already saw that they're underway for sanding so things are moving along nicely with that and back on the side sticks, for those who are at the open house, I may have mentioned I wasn't happy with how um, the action was on these sliders there for the side sticks because we just had these uh, sort of um, 4130 little blocks in there before running um, in that slot, but they were kind of binding a little bit. So I switched it out to bearings, which I had ordered a little while ago. And uh, so there's basically, you're looking at four bearings there. There's two on each bolt, and there's the same thing on the opposite side. And uh, just with a little bit of an adjustment in there, um, I've got that really running really smoothly now. It's obviously not in the screen. It's hard to do it with one hand while you're holding the camera. But anyway, it's uh, working uh, nice and smoothly now, so I'm pretty happy with that. And there may be uh, some opportunity to make that better for production, but it's, again, it's one of these things you sort of try it out for the prototype and see how well it's going to work and uh, make an improvement wherever you can and uh, to make things better moving forward. And back onto the wiring, I'm actually having quite a bit of fun with this now. Um, picked up after uh, Greg and his dad Bernie were here and got me started. So I'm um, just basically working through everything that I've done in CAD now and, you know, labeling all the good stuff and, and just getting it all sorted out. So here I've actually gone and done the RS-232 connection, which goes through the forward bulkhead and goes down to the engine analyzer unit, which is the Garmin unit, and then it comes back and reports um, information back into that uh, the main PFD display there. So uh, there's a bunch of different cables already but done, but this is one example. So that's the engine indication unit there. And you can plumb a whole bunch of engine information into that. Uh, but initially, we're just going to use it um, for the fuel cells and maybe a couple other things. So this is the, um, 
the fuel uh, sender unit for fuel levels that we're going to have in the straight tank. So I've got two of these and they basically will wire into that engine indication unit and send information back to be displayed on the Garmin screen for what the level is. So it'll basically plug into one of those connections in there and then through that RS-232 interface that I showed you going through that bulkhead it'll basically show the information up on that screen there. So that's all cool. Okay, so on to the turbo math. So on Thursday I had quite a bit of time and I found this new uh, spreadsheet which allows you to put in a whole bunch of engine parameters. And uh, so here you can put in like um, your RPMs and displacement and you know engine um, efficiency and things like you know atmospheric pressure and then ultimately you know what your boost um, settings are coming out of the engine or sorry coming out of the turbo and what the temperature is um, going into the, of the air temperature going into the intake and it gives you things like you know how much what the airflow is you know based upon that information and ultimately can give you uh, what the horsepower is and I had to modify it for diesel so I've set up the um, brake specific fuel consumption there of 0.326 which is pretty much what that Audi diesel um, works out at and so having um, this information allows me to go and first of all verify um, what we had prior when we were on the dyno and then make some projections moving forward. Okay so the first thing I did was go back and look at this uh, screenshot that I took when the engine was over at the dyno and here you can see um, the engine was up at 4000 rpm and the uh, manifold pressure was uh, 2799 millibars which is basically 2.8 bar and you know I've got the temperature on there of the intake there was about 170 degrees Fahrenheit so I went and uh, put this information into the spreadsheet um, so I could get kind of you know horsepower and airflow numbers and things like that so there's the manifold pressure there and I've you know converted that 2.8 bar into the actual pressure in PSI put in the temperature there well, actually it was 160 or so was the thing and basically um, it put out there 430 horsepower which is pretty much what Grant had said and uh, you know it was a little higher than what I thought but you know this thing is really backing it up so next thing I did was uh, go and look at the one that I took when we had it over in the shop now with the uh, prop on it and this is the one that you can see here so this is where we had it up 2698 rpm and you can see the same or well, similar boost numbers not quite as high as what we had it on the dyno but basically went and took those numbers as well and then uh, plugged them into the same spreadsheet and uh, ultimately this is what we ended up with. So this is a different spreadsheet now, one that I worked on a while ago and I've been modifying. So here I've got the max power and the cruise power. So these are the two different readings that we have. Um, so there's the one with 4000 RPM there. And here's the airflow number that um, that correlates with from that other spreadsheet and that's actually calculated on this one but it matches the the other spreadsheet which is good so it's confirming it and there's the boost uh, numbers there in bar and so I just you know got a whole bunch of different conversions here to calculate from bar to PSI and, and whatnot and so down the bottom here this is basically the boost that's running on each particular turbo in bar and then ultimately a fuel flow it's calculated using the the brake specific fuel flow so 19 gallons an hour and so here's the second run this is the one uh, when we had the prop on in the shop and so that one there put in the rpms and basically did all the same stuff as what i did before and as you can see at the top there basically came out with about 260 horsepower and so that's kind of what I was guesstimating it was putting out. So this is where the prop is basically going into a, a higher pitch and we can't control it right now because the governor uh, isn't working correctly or, we, or the, actually those seals aren't working correctly. But anyway, 260 horsepower and 11.7 uh, gallons an hour. So uh, the next thing we want to do now is uh, think about um, what it's going to be like in cruise. So for a high speed cruise I really wanted to have no more than about 3000 RPM on the engine. I wanted to try and get 300 horsepower. So let's see, putting all that in, let's see if we can get that. So there's the airflow, it'd be 23 um, pounds per minute. And you know I don't have all the boost uh, numbers in there but basically I went back through and put those numbers into this spreadsheet. So there's my 3000 RPM and I've you sort of estimated some boost numbers there similar to you know what we're seeing with the um, with the prop on at that 2600 RPM 
and uh, so use a similar boost numbers there and ultimately was able to get 296 horsepower at 3000 rpm um, with those settings so um, there's the 300 horsepower I wanted at 3000 rpm uh, which is going to work nicely and if you scroll down to the bottom here you can see that would be on about 13 and a half gallons an hour which is totally respectable so if we pull up the drag comparison chart that I have on the website that I've had there for a long time and we work sort of backwards from 300 horsepower and we divide that by 0.14 which is that um, per pound of drag number that I came up with from this chart um, basically what that comes out to is that we can overcome about 2100 pounds of drag and from this chart 2100 pounds of drag on the Raptor should be about uh, 200 knots uh, indicated so that um, will mean that we can have a 300 knot aircraft because 200 indicated at 25,000 feet is 300 true. Okay, so let's talk about a slow cruise power setting. So let's go for um, 160 horsepower at uh, 2,500 RPM. And obviously we can just, you know, dial the prop a, a certain way to get um, the right amount of boost to be putting out 160 horsepower at 2,500 RPM. It's not that difficult. So putting those numbers in here, um, it shows up the boost again. This is 25,000 feet, and that would be putting out uh, or using about 7.2 gallons an hour, which is um, kind of the number that I've had on the website forever and ever. And again, I was sort of calculated using similar math that I have now. But if we go back to the drag comparison, and if we take that uh, 160 horsepower and divide it by uh, 0.14, we end up getting about 1,150 pounds of drag. Um, that can be overcome with that amount of horsepower. So looking at the bottom yellow line there, 1150, that gives us about um, 155 knots indicated. And 155 knots indicated at 25,000 feet is about 230 knots true. So there's the 230 knots on the 7.5 gallons an hour, which is you know what we really want to have for a slow speed cruise, which is super nice. And keep in mind, this is all just math and science, and uh, n these numbers need to be verified. You know, when we get the aircraft up to twenty-five thousand feet. But fortunately, now we have the luxury of actually having some real-world numbers of the aircraft, of the engine on the ground, and uh, what performance it's putting out. And again, we'll back those up uh, when we get it back on the dyno. And one last thing I thought uh, would be interesting to look at was um, one of the things I didn't change for twenty-five thousand feet was the um, manifold temperature. So here I just basically use the same number we have th uh, for the engine on the ground. Um, so that was at 3000 um, RPM would give us uh, 296 horsepower, that, but that's with 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Now at 25,000 feet you lose basically 3 degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet. So we're going to be about 75 degrees less. So if we put in 100 degrees Fahrenheit as the air temperature going into the intake, all of a sudden we jump up to 334 so we gain almost 40 horsepower um, just by having the much colder air at altitude so that could um, help us out a lot more as well and uh, just mean that these numbers that I'm projecting here um, are going to be uh, met without too many problems at all so that's kind of exciting anyway I hope you just uh, enjoyed this discussion and that's our update for uh, this week and uh, thanks again for watching